Howdy everyone, War Sarsi here, and today we'll be looking at Star Wars Republic Commando on Nintendo Switch. Now this is a title that I've repeatedly come back to since the original Xbox and PC version, and I originally intended to do a nostalgia review on this game, as it's gone not only from being tied as my favorite Star Wars game to possibly being my favorite, but it might be one of my favorite games of all time, so I've got a fair amount to say about not only the Switch port, but the game itself, as well as a special sort of request at the end of the video to anyone who plays this. Star Wars Republic Commando is a first person shooter set during the Clone Wars where you play as an elite squad of commandos called Delta Squad. As 3-8 aka Boss, you'll be joined by 6-2 aka Scorch, 42 aka Fixer, and 07 aka Sev. Across three planets, though technically two as one of them is aboard a ship in space, you'll fight against the Separatist forces with your squad whom you'll have full tactical command of. You can tell them to follow you, take the lead, hold their position, as well as order them to a bunch of tactical spots around each level that will see them using everything from their sniper rifle, grenade launcher, grenades, and even some turret locations as well as the frequent terminal slicing, door breaching, and explosive plantings throughout the game. This is a system that I think even 16 years later still feels very fresh as the AI is typically very intelligent. I say typically because I have seen a couple of cases from other people's playthroughs where one of the bots would walk into something and manage to get stuck and you'd have to team kill them and then revive them to get them unstuck. But again, that's a very rare situation and usually it's the player that has to try to get them stuck. Also, I want to point out that in most shooters, first person or third, you go down, you either die or enter a timed bleed out mode, whereas this, you always have another chance as long as you have squad mates to get you up, which can create some very strategy required situations when your team is overwhelmed and you have to decide whether to rush in and pick your teammates up or try to stick it out. But your squad isn't always there for you, even though other than the first part of the first mission, there are are only three parts in the game where you're actually alone and away from your squad and actually have to worry about going down with no one to revive you. And while I'm talking about solo parts, I'll mention the ghost ship chapter. Through a good portion of that, you're all alone and I'll just say that as a kid, this portion of the game really intimidated me because this chapter has some seriously dark atmosphere. You enter a ship that has long since been missing, separated from your squad, and you can hear the creaks of the damaged ship with the occasional eerie music, complemented by plenty of dead clone troopers you'll find throughout it as you wander through sections without power that look like they've been through hell all by yourself. There's even some secrets that add to the atmosphere, like a dead clone trooper who had managed to get his hands on a lightsaber. Let's just say that the force was not with him. Now while in my opinion the ghost ship chapter is the strongest in terms of atmosphere, all three chapters have some great atmosphere, supported by a mix of both movie and original soundtrack. Now moving on to weapons, besides your DC-17M weapon that you can take apart to transform between a blaster, grenade launcher, and sniper, there are a bunch of other weapons you can pick up from special enemies and off the ground later in the game, from the Wookiee Bowcaster to unique unique Trandoshan weapons like the shotgun, SMG, and LMG. The last of which is my favorite weapon in the game, which I'll point out is ironic because in the PC version, there's a cheat to give every weapon except for that one. There's also a small variety of grenades, with there being frag, electric, flashbang, and supersonic, which triggers as soon as an enemy is nearby. I personally like to throw those directly at an enemy as it instantly becomes quite an effective weapon in terms of damage. Now, there are a few downsides to the Switch port of the game, which I will list off now. First and most obvious, the multiplayer is missing, which is ironic because the extras section still has behind the scene videos from the original version, one of which includes multiplayer footage. The Jedi Academy Switch port got multiplayer and honestly, if they put more effort into this port and brought over the multiplayer, I'd be tempted to get a Switch Online membership for this game alone because while I only ever played a few matches on the non-Steam PC version back in the day, it was a fun deathmatch game, especially when you got into the modding scene with a bunch of custom levels and weapons and stuff. Then there's the missing cheats. The previous Star Wars games Aspire ported 
had a cheat code to open cheat menus with a bunch of neat cheats from the PC versions. While not as varied with cheats as those games, Republic Commando still had cheats worth having, such as God Mode, No Clip, All Weapons, Level Skipping, and a few others that would have provided more opportunity to go back to random levels and mess around in, especially since I ended up beating this version in just a day. The last one, and the most important one, this version has frame rate issues. It runs fine enough that you can still enjoy it, but not not only by default is the frame rate slightly lower than what it should be for a 16 year old game, but there are times where the game will actively lag because you're in a bigger area or looking at a bigger area or there are more enemies on the screen, something that even the original Xbox version never did. But overall, the game itself, I cannot recommend it enough that you need to give it a playthrough. And again, despite the fact that this port has a few hiccups in some places, I honestly still think that this game is worth getting just for the portability aspect. I already played through the game and I was still going back to random missions just to mess around because I love the game that much. I've pretty much over the years had a lot of time to crack open the game and not only find lots of glitches in the base game, but I even got into modding and tried making some custom characters in the PC version as well as editing some of the missions. It's not too difficult to do as I believe it runs on the Unreal Engine 2, but if you want this game yourself, it's available on the eShop for the Switch and the PSN Store for the PS4 for $15. Now, before I wrap this video up, I actually have a request for any players of this. This is something I ask of anyone that's played the game, as this is something I've only managed to do once as a kid, and only seen one other person on YouTube have it happen to them, and I've been trying to recreate it ever since. So, there's this glitch that happens from what I've noticed. It seems to be when you load an older save, and I can only assume that it happened because it fails to spawn a player in their save position, but there's this this glitch that when you load a save, it puts you at the beginning of the level, and when you go back to where you were supposed to be, there's a clone of you standing there called Delta Zero Zero. It's an untextured Delta as 3.8 doesn't have any real textures, and it sounds like you, if you attack it, gets incapacitated like you in that awkward folding animation, and even adds a Zero Zero next to other Deltas on your HUD. Back when I had it happen, I even learned how to further produce it in the already affected save, where if you downed that Delta, saved, and reloaded loaded the save, it would create another one, and it would carry over to every level you did that in with that save. Now, of course, like I said, I've been trying over the years to reproduce this on every version, and I've had no luck. So, if you ever see said glitch, please remember me and let me know about it. I know it's a weird thing to ask in a review, but I figured I'd throw it out there, since this is probably the only time I'm going to get a talk about this game on the channel. But, this is Warsarcy on the Game Clips channel, and I'm out.